period in a mass spring system. Okay, we've got a guess for tightness of the coils, which would actually be the what? We have a variable. Constant. K. Yeah, K. The spring constant. Force, force per um, newtons per meter of deformation. Okay, so K could control the period. What else could control the period? The material that the spring's made out of. Well, that controls K. So what else? In a mass spring system. Mass. Mass! That's actually the primary driver. Um, mass is the biggest driver. K does have some effect, the spring constant, but the, the largest the largest factor that influences period in a mass spring system is just the mass. So we can time the mass with this, and then we can put on a substantially lighter mass. Blow that up. So we can put on a very light little mass. And what do you think will happen to the period? Okay, so you think the period will be decreased. Okay, you've got a general sense of the period on that. We don't have a formal number. So we'll put a very light little mass on here. Oops, very light. Okay. Very short period. It doesn't take very long for it to complete a cycle of motion. And the, the amount of deformation is also less. We have fewer newtons of force <coughs> going on it. So yeah, mass is the primary thing that controls that controls the period of a mass spring system. Um, what does mass contribute to here? So we said <coughs> we have this thing at the equilibrium position. We let it go. It gets to maximum deformation. What what moves it back towards equilibrium? What force? Well, it, it is the spring force. There, there are a couple different words for it, and I want you to connect them all. What force? What? No, it's not called normal force in this case. Restoring force. Okay, so restoring force is one word. In the case of a mass spring system, what is the restoring force also known as? What, was, what were we talking about? Where we're talking about where we're talking about acceleration is a max and velocity is a max uh, okay. and and restoring force is either at a max or a zero. So we call it restoring force. What else do we call it? Spring force or elastic force. And we talked about this a little bit when we talked about elastic potential energy, and we had K, which was the the uh, the constant, which was related to the force developed or the force that could potentially be stored in a piece of elastic material. Okay, so if we've got this restoring force, at the maximum deformation, the restoring force wants to return this to equilibrium, right? Why doesn't it stop at equilibrium? It overshoots because it has what? Momentum, which is equal to what? Part something V? Mass velocity, mv. P is equal to mv. Okay, so hence, the more mass we've got, guess what? The more momentum. The more it's going to overshoot equilibrium each direction. And the longer it's going to, the further it's going to go away from equilibrium, the longer it's going to take. So you're going to change your amount of deformation, you're going to change the period of your motion. Okay. Um, this is the thing that you all hit on immediately. It's also affected, and you know this intuitively, by the spring constant, by how stiff this spring is. We can get a very, very loose spring. We can get a very tight spring with the same mass. They are going to have different periods. But the relationship between mass and period is stronger. OK. Um, does that equation look familiar? Uh, period yeah. equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Yeah. Yeah. What's it look like? Not even rearranging. What's the what's the equation you used for um, period?
period of a pendulum. The same except. Okay. Um, mass and K instead of gravity and length. Okay, now we're going to do the sample problem 12C on 